it's time to cook with Susan Beck. Today I'm going to make zucchini spice bread. Now this is a little bit before zucchini season, so I'm going to be using some of the frozen zucchini that I have had in my freezer. It's time to use this up as the new zucchini are sprouting in the garden. So a couple hours ago I took this out of the freezer and just let it drain because when it goes into the um, freezer, it tends to get a little bit frosty, even though I have a sealer and I've got a lot of water down there. So zucchini adds a lot of moisture to zucchini breads and zucchini cakes, and that's one of the great um, things about it. But we do not want this much water or we're just gonna have a soupy mess and not very good bread bag. So this has still, still got a little bit of ice, but um, for the most part, it has completely drained. So we're going to be using quite a few different spices today as we make this bread. So let's have a look at those. First, a closer look at that zucchini that has been sitting in this colander, just dripping. Look at the water that I've collected, okay? That's why we want to let it sit out for a little bit, get rid of some of the excess moisture. All right, some great spices today, cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, and cloves. We're going to use a combination of applesauce and oil, replacing some of the oil with applesauce. I'll talk about that more later. We're going to use four tablespoons of white sugar, but quite a bit of brown sugar, which I just think gives this a much richer, fuller taste. Then we'll have four eggs, vanilla, baking powder, baking soda, and finally, some flour. Today we'll be mixing up our zucchini bread using my stand mixer, but a hand mixer works just fine. You could even stir this by hand. We don't want to over mix our bread anyway, so it's okay to not have a big fancy machine. All right, brown sugar should always be packed into the measuring cup. So the first one is done, and then I thought I'd do the second one while recording. So I like to just put the palm of my hand in to the top of this container and just press until it's completely full and level and I can't fit any more in. That does mean maybe a little tapping to get it out, but that's a good sign that you have packed your brown sugar. I have four tablespoons of white sugar that I will be putting in there along with my oils. So the recipe calls for, how much was that again? Um, one and a third cup of vegetable or canola oil. But every single quick bread recipe, whether it be a banana bread or a carrot morning glory kind of bread with nuts and so forth, can um, be substituted with applesauce. It's a great way to make it a little bit healthier. I love using these little cups. I always wait, they go on sale for just even less sometimes, but definitely as cheap as buying a big container. And this way I don't have any waste. So I just buy these little lunch ones. Sometimes I eat them my lunch. Sometimes I use them to make bread. Each one of these is a half of a cup. So there's a half cup. And I'll get another one out of here to make one cup. Now I could use all applesauce, but rather than opening and having to measure another one of those, today I am just going to do a third cup of oil with my one cup of applesauce. It'll still go a long way to increasing the healthiness of our zucchini bread. All right, we've got our oils and our sugars together. We're gonna to just use the paddle attachment on our mixer. And we just kinda of wanna, well in the cookie baking world, cream them together. that's nicely mixed we're going to move on to our eggs I like to break my eggs into a separate container so let's remove those from there and I will just crack into this little bowl that they were sitting in I'm just gonna add those one at a time Almost, I caught a couple pieces with my fingers, and I really don't want to have to be digging that out of this mixing bowl. All right, speed it up for a minute to really get those eggs incorporated. 
time for our dry ingredients. I am going to sift today. I have made this many times without sifting, but you know, cloves are kind of strong, so if you can sift them and break them up, that's great. Anytime you're using baking powder, when you get a little ball of baking powder in a bite, it just really gives you a very bitter um, aluminum taste that um, most guests don't care for. I know my children don't. So I've got one cup of flour in there already, and we'll be adding those spices to this. And then the proper way to measure flour is to heap it and then run your knife across the top to make a nice level cup of flour. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and sift those two cups and then we'll measure one more. Again, I have heaped my flour, take the back edge of a knife and run it off for a nice smooth top. From there, we will move on to one and a half teaspoons of salt, which I'm gonna put directly in because they, um, the kosher salt doesn't really go through the netting on the bottom of this anyway. All right, then we want one teaspoon of baking soda and one teaspoon of baking powder. And it's also one teaspoon of vanilla. Now notice I did my vanilla last, that way my spoon was not wet. Okay, that vanilla can go directly into the bowl as well. Then we have our spices. So here we have cloves. Cloves are rather strong. It's just a quarter teaspoon. And then we're going to use a half a teaspoon of the ginger and a half a teaspoon, sorry, one and a half teaspoons. I'm gonna fill this one and the one teaspoon for the nutmeg. And then the spice we're gonna use the most of is cinnamon. Three teaspoons of cinnamon or one tablespoon. All right, time to sift. So this little metal rod in there just flips over and over, breaking everything up so it falls down below and everything is nice and fine. And I've always thought sifting is kind of fun. There's a picture of the bottom of it where there's just that little nut. Okay, there we go. Our nice, fine, dry ingredients. Now that we're ready to add the dry ingredients, this is where we hit the point where we don't want to over mix this. We just want to mix it until all of these spices and flour are incorporated. off with your mixture on a low speed and then turn it up a little bit higher because you don't want to make that big cloud of dust. Been there, done that many times. All right, everything is mixed in, not overly um, stirred real hard, which will be just fine because we're going to stir by hand the zucchini and any last flour or baking soda or baking powder that needs to be mixed in will be incorporated at that time. So we're going to take this Paddle beater off, clean it up a little bit, and we're finished using the mixer. Now, this zucchini bread can definitely made, be made with fresh zucchini. In fact, that's how I usually do it. I just freeze a little bit just to have zucchini once in a while in the winter time, whether I make a cake or bread or some muffins. But if you do this in the summertime, you would just take your fresh zucchini and either grate them by hand or run them through your food processor and, and just stir it in. The recipe calls for three and a half cups of zucchini. This recipe will be making two loaves of bread or 24 muffins. I'm probably slightly short on the three and a half cups of zucchini, but I'm gonna call it good. It's rather forgiving that way. So when you have a zucchini in the garden and however much you get, it'll probably work out just fine. So I'm just kind of folding, means flipping it over to incorporate that zucchini. I don't want to, you know, beat it real, real hard and go round and round with it. So just a little bit of beating there, or sorry, folding there. I see I've got kind of a chunk of zucchini all in one spot. I want to kind of fold that and make sure I've got zucchini everywhere. 
don't think I mentioned when I started recording that I do have my oven preheating at 350 degrees and it's a great idea to preheat before you start mixing because then your oven is all set to go when you are done. Now this is going to make two loaves of bread. Today I am going to make one large loaf and then I have this cool little pan that has four little loaves in it. These are great so you can give away like a little loaf to somebody and so forth. So that's kind of my plan usually is to share some and to make a big one for my family to eat. Now you can make two big loaves, you could make muffins, it's completely up to you. I can also post this recipe at the bottom in the description with just one loaf of bread. But boy, if you have a zucchini plant, you're gonna have so much zucchini, you might as well just double the batch and make two from the start. All right, we wanna grease our pan. So I want these to be quite well greased so that my bread will pop out. And then once it's done cooking, we will let it finish resting on a cooling rack. I'm gonna start with these small ones and just using a cup here to fill them. I wanna fill them about two thirds of the way full. They will rise some. And then we will put the rest of the batter into our large pan. Let's use that spatula here and clean that up a little bit. All right, onto the, that looks like you could use a little stirring around the edges there. All right, the rest goes into our large bread pan. go into the oven and it does take a little while to bake 45 to 55 minutes and we will know if they're done because we're going to take a toothpick and we will insert it into the cake that looks almost finished and if it comes out with no batter on the end of the toothpick it is finished if it still has some liquidy batter on it and it's a little soft inside we'll put it back in for another you know four or five minutes Lastly, I should mention, when talking about cooking time, smaller things will cook faster. So muffins and these smaller pans, I'm going to be checking at probably 35 minutes because there's not as much volume. They'll cook through to the center much faster. It's been 35 minutes. Let's check out if these small loaves are done. Just insert the toothpick, pull it out. Oh, looks great. No batter left. We're gonna move these to that cooling rack and we're gonna let that large loaf cook for 10 more minutes. Run like a little serrated knife, or even just a knife that you would use at the table around the edge. You could grease these well, but it usually helps to loosen things up a little bit if we take the time to do this step. And then we'll just carefully I'm gonna lift these out. They seem pretty loose. Let's see what happens here. Now well, we got three of them. I like to just kind of turn them on their sides here to sit. Let's see if we can work on that other one here a little bit. It didn't want to come out quite as easily. There we go. All right. We will let those cool. They're just steaming hot and that large one needs a little more time. After the large one finished baking, I moved it to the cooling rack as well and I've let it cool for a bit. Let's just cut a couple slices here. Mm. It's just a nice golden brown and I love when I cut in, I can just tell like the outside is nice and crusty and the inside tender and there's these little flecks of green from the zucchini. That's another thing, I never peel my zucchini. They say all the nutrients are in the skin and that green color just adds some beauty to this. Oh, let's give it a taste. Mm. Yeah, I've got that nice crunch from the side and you know that brown sugar, it just gives it almost like a caramel taste. Mm. Excellent, zucchini spice bread. So as your zucchini start to multiply in the garden, here's a recipe to put it to use. Enjoy zucchini spice bread.